Dubai World says it's in constructive talks with lenders about a debt restructuring, and Sheikh Mohammed says concerns over the Emirates' credit crisis were exaggerated. How do you interpret these developments? Well, we're going to find out. Hashim Montasser is head of asset management at EFG Hermes in Dubai. His firm oversees more than $4.5 billion and is the biggest publicly traded Arab investment bank. So, Hashim, let's start with this. Dubai wants us to believe that all of this was just a game of brinkmanship with the banks. Do you buy that? Uh, I would, I think, I, I'm not sure this is what they were trying to say. I think uh, they were trying to say that this is contained, and we think it is, in fact, contained. I think the, the signaling and the way this was communicated to the market was obviously done in a very, very poorly, and the market has reacted as such, perhaps overreacted in the, in the early stages. But I think the news we've seen coming out uh, today and even yesterday from the central bank sends a reinforcing message that the issues are contained. This is not going to spread necessarily, and, uh, and we believe that. Okay, but let me ask you this. We buy, we, we buy that notion. Until, okay, so until last week, Please. everybody was under the impression that, uh, including the rating agencies, right, that one, there was an implicit government guarantee behind Dubai World's debt, and two, that Abu Dhabi would always be there to step up if Dubai couldn't pay, and it sees, seems that neither of those scenarios proved to be true. So what does that tell you about Dubai and Abu Dhabi? Yeah, it appears there's been a dialogue all along between Dubai and Abu Dhabi trying to sort out what's core to the UAE and what's not. And what's come out of those conversations, I think, is that companies, some of the Dubai world companies, such as Nakhil, are not. And therefore, they will be restructured in some fashion. I think, uh, as, you, as you rightfully said, I think the, the issue was that investors more and more, especially over the last couple of months, had been expecting a full bailout. Now, that was partially because I think some of the signals coming from Dubai sent that kind of signal. But uh, the, the, the idea of a guarantee was always implicit, was never really talked about explicitly. I think there are companies that are core. I think companies like DP World, uh, Dubai Ports is core. Uh, I think uh, Jabal Ali Free Zone is probably core, such as companies, and they made it very clear. They've ring fenced those companies. They've sent a strong statement. I think what they're saying is they will not stand behind or at least fully bail out companies where the business model is very questionable, such okay. as Nakhil. Okay, so let's take that core, non-core issue and add to that the whole idea of some misleading signals coming out of Dubai. For somebody like you, an investor in the region, what are the lessons that you learn as a result of what you've uh, just gone through the past week? I think, you know, the, again, I think where I, f I think they made a big mistake was the signaling, the way it was communicated to investors, the lack of detail, the lack of transparency. That's been an issue in Dubai and in the wider GCC for some time now. And I think that's one of the reasons the region on the equity side and even on the, on the credit side has been trading at a discount to where it should be. So I think that's now been accentuated. Uh, Dubai will take a credibility hit. But I think we need to put that hit within what it really means. I don't think it means that Dubai goes away, that it will no longer be a financial hub or a trading hub. I, we don't buy that. So I think what we've learned is to be very careful about, you know, not reading too much into statements, really doing your homework in terms of which companies you should be investing in, in terms of, you know, actual tangible assets, uh, solvency, uh, cash flow ability, cash flow generation ability, etc. So that's a lesson that us and others, I think, have learned. Um, but I think uh, with the other lessons we've learned is out of this, you will find some winners and some losers. And I think the market is currently sorting out which ones will come out on top and which ones won't. How, if you've seen over the last day or so, you're starting to see differentiation in credit and in the equity markets. How about Dubai itself? You say it's going to may remain a financial hub, but why would anybody want to lend to Dubai? Again, credit markets, as you know, don't look too kindly on companies or countries that have threatened to default. Um, I don't want to be too cynical, but markets have also short memories. I mean, remember, and this is nowhere close in magnitude, but remember Russia, remember Argentina, the Asian crisis, etc. I think this is, I, I wouldn't put this in this bracket. I think Dubai has had issues, continues to have issues. I think they're dealing with it. Uh, I hope I'm not sounding, you know, too defensive in terms of defending Dubai. Uh, I'm just, so I, I am saying this has been badly uh, miscommunicated uh, and there are serious issues that will curtail some of the growth. I just don't think it means Dubai just goes under, which some of the media outlets and, and, and you know, the, the financial press has been indicating, at least in the earlier stage of the crisis. Hashim, I thank you so very much. Hashim Montasser. Hashim, I'm sorry we've run out of time. That's Hashim Montasser of EFG Hermes.